Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to work on mating up our main spars. We'll start by taking a quick look here at the drawings. Um, this is where our two spars are going to come together. Um, they're going to slightly overlap each other here. There are three alignment holes here that we're going to uh, drill up to a quarter inch um, and then put pins in. We're also going to add these rig blocks here, um, one on the top side, one on the bottom side. Um, and then we're going to up drill uh, through these two attach blocks here. I've already drilled um, these up to half inch, but only on one side on the right um, spar. Um, and then we're gonna use this um, alignment tool here um, to drill it up all the way through the rest of the way up to 3 eighths of an inch, which is the inside diameter of this tube. Um, and that should slide into the half inch hole I've already drilled. Um, and that should center it perfectly. Um, and then we up drill all the way through up to a half an inch. All right, so I have these uh, alignment holes here. Uh, Sonics has drilled three of them to line up all the holes here. Uh, I've just gone ahead and put in a number 40 drill bit. Um, they seem to fit nice and tight in there and hold all the parts together. Um, to the point where I can't even push them all the way through, but it keeps it nice and centered. Um, once I do this, I'm actually going to drill these up to a quarter inch um, and then put some pins in place. And then we'll put our alignment tool here into the hole. Um, and that will give us the ability to uh, drill straight down into the hole here and keep it centered. We're going to drill that up to 3 8 inch, which is the inside diameter of this uh, tube. Um, and then once we've drilled it up to 3 eighths of an inch, we'll pull that out and drill it up the rest of the way to a half inch. And I've also purchased this uh, half inch reamer tool here so that we can uh, ensure that it's uh, exactly a half inch um, and nice and straight. So I've looked farther ahead in the instructions in these three uh, alignment holes here. Um, they're mostly used to hold it in place right now. Uh, I'll drill those up and uh, put a couple of these quarter inch pins uh, into place just to hold it steady uh, while we drill out these bigger holes here. Um, and then eventually when we go to rig the wing, uh, we'll use these again to hold it all in place while we drill this uh, hole one more time uh, into uh, wherever the attach point is on the airplane. Um, obviously that isn't built yet, that's part of the fuselage. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna pull out this drill bit that I used to hold it centered while I clamped it all in place. These two right here are still holding it in place. Um, so between these and the clamps, this thing shouldn't move too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the center one here and start drilling this up to a quarter inch. Just making sure that stays centered as I drill. There's one. All right, last one. And I only have two of these pins, so I'm going to put in a, an A and 4 bolt, which is a quarter inch bolt, just to hold it in place, just like I would if it was a pin. And then uh, put this down inside of the hole. All right, and I've switched over to a 3 8 inch drill bit here, which is going to fit down inside of this uh, template here. Drop a little bit of oil down inside of there just to make sure that I've got it lubricated. getting pretty hot so I'm gonna let that cool down a minute before I go on. I can feel it starting to bind a little bit. All right, I got some wood chips coming out of it so I got through into my block that I put underneath, that's good. All right, now that I've got that hole drilled up to the 3 8 inch, I'm just gonna bump it up 
to a 15 30 seconds, um, which is slightly smaller than half an inch. Um, just enough space that I can then use my uh, reamer here to take it up to a full half inch. seconds. Alright, and then we'll just ream out the hole all the way up to a half inch. Just going to put a little bit of cutting oil on here. A little bit down here in the hole as well. See how tight that hole is. Nice and snug all the way down in there. Good. All right, so I've taken a couple of weeks off uh, since I was working on the plane the last time. Um, I had to order a few parts, and then I was out of town for a little bit as well. So here's uh, here's what I had to buy. Uh, we talked in the last video about a couple of extra holes that were accidentally drilled um, by the manufacturer, Sonics, uh, in my wing spar. Uh, Sonic support told me to go ahead and put in some AN3 uh, bolts um, in place of the, uh, the, the hard rivets that they, uh, that they put into it originally. Um, so I purchased a couple of these. I bought, you know, 30 um, of the bolts and the, and the lock nuts here. And then looking farther ahead in my instruction manual here, um, there's going to come a time when I need to actually mate the uh, these wing spars up with the uh, airframe. Um, and you're supposed to use these pins. Um, it says here to use the McMaster car part number 902938417 a or similar. Um, or you can also use bolts and washers and castle nuts and all that kind of stuff. Um, I opted to go ahead and just buy these uh, quick release pins. Um, so I got two of these. Uh, they're half inch uh, diameter um, and they basically they have these little stops down here, these ball bearings, and when I push on the button here at the top it uh, releases those ball bearings. So when I push on this button here on the top it allows it to slide into place and then lock into place until I push the button again. Um, so I purchased two of those, um, and then for the rear spar, uh, there's two other smaller ones. Um, it says the quick release pin, um, quarter inch, whatever. Um, it gives you another part number from McMaster Car, which is what I ordered, the 90293A135 or similar. Um, or you could put in an AN410 bolt um, with washer and castle nut and a cotter pin. Um, and so I went ahead and purchased these uh, quick release pins as well for the, uh, the rear spar um, set piece here. So that's what we'll go ahead and fit today. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put these bolts into place in those rivet holes that were drilled by the manufacturer. Um, and then I'm going to add these rig plates here. Um, here's a, what the instructions look like. Basically you slide the, uh, the two spars together um, and then put in the pins to lock them in place. And I'll put in these, uh, these locking pins here um, to hold it in, in place as well, just to make sure everything's centered where I want it. Um, and then you use these rig plates here um, to just basically this this is one spar sliding into the other and then you use these rig plates to just give it a good stop so it knows uh, so you know when it's into place and it's ready to, to put the pin in to hold it all together. So this will probably be the most difficult part of my job today. 
All right, just as a reminder, these are the two holes that I need to fill with bolts. Um, these, uh, these were riveted down here previously, but they drilled the holes uh, in the wrong spots um, for these rivets versus where these bolts will go. Um, so these were filled with rivets. I had to drill them out in order to uh, put my tie down block here on the back, um, and which left these open, um, which were originally supposed to be drilled, I guess, for that block, but that would have put it on the top of the wing instead of the bottom. Um, and so rather than uh, putting uh, oversized rivets in here, uh, Sonics had told me to go ahead and put in these uh, AN3 bolts. Um, I recently read in uh, Kit Plane Magazine, there's a really good article that Carrie Forrest made. Um, if you're not familiar with, with Carrie, he used to be a, um, a support person over at uh, Sonics, just recently retired, but he wrote a really excellent uh, article on how to use these self-locking bolts here, uh, nuts I mean, and how much uh, how many threads you need to have and the right lengths and deciding on the right lengths of the, of the shafts and everything on these bolts. Um, anyway, so these bolts are going to come up through the bottom here. They are long enough that I need to put a washer on top um, in order to make the length of the nut sticking out so I have just, an, just a few of these threads sticking out on top. I followed the instructions, uh, the Sonics instructions, and you'll notice that this and this bolt don't really stick out far enough. You should have about one to one and a half threads sticking out and a maximum of about three threads sticking out. Um, so these don't quite stick out far enough. And so uh, what I've done is I've, I've put a washer on the back according to the instructions, but that's not quite the best way to do it. It's better to have a few extra threads sticking out here. Um, so I'll remove the washer from the back side and then put on a new nut on this end um, and that should give me plenty of space here that should give me an extra you know thread or two sticking out here um, and then obviously this nut because it's already been used once I'm just gonna toss it um, they're only about 30 cents or something like that I ordered a bunch from uh, from Vans Aircraft Company. That's where these uh, came from. I ordered 30 of the bolts and 30 of these nuts. Um, so I have a couple extra on hand. Um, and I think that the total cost was, you know, 30 bucks or something like that with shipping and everything. So definitely worth uh, paying the extra money and getting the right parts uh, and getting it replaced as it should be. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. These two nuts are garbage now, so I'm just going to drop them right here into the waste basket. Okay, I've uh, made it up my two spars here. Um, so I've got the two pins in uh, that I purchased from McMaster Car. There and there, I put the one quarter inch one, one of the quarter inch ones here in the middle, and then I just have a couple of quarter inch pins that go in these holes that I had to size up to quarter inch. Next, I'm going to be adding these blocks right here that. Uh, We'll go just like that. So this is the left wing spar going in. This from here over is the right wing spar. And this um, rig plate here will go right over the top of that and uh, block it from sliding uh, in any farther than it is already. So I have that lined up down here with a C clamp. You can see I put a little tiny piece of wood in here that I had laying on the ground already. I trimmed off a piece of a 2x4 to make it flat on one side and uh, this little chunk of wood here makes it, it just happens to fit perfectly in there so I put it in there as sort of a template to keep it from moving around. Um, 
it's all lined up here on this edge and in this corner and the C-clamp kind of goes around and grabs the whole thing. So I'll go ahead and line up the one for this side as well and uh, drill this one first because it's on top and easier to drill from the top. All right, uh, got it all put into place on the other side. I'm now gonna drill this hole. It's a 3 16 I'm not sure that this Clico goes all the way through into the next one. So actually I'm gonna put a bolt in there instead that I know reaches all the way through. I don't think a Clico is gonna quite make it. All right, now the hope here is that between the bolt and this Clico, it holds that uh, plate steady enough that it doesn't move while I'm drilling. It looks like it's in place. The pin still moves. It's not bound up. I think that that's just about perfect. So now we'll go on and do the next one. Alright, and then this one I'll drill from the back side so you can see what it looks like uh, with the clamp in place here. I'm going to be drilling in um, from the opposite side going this way. And this is the block that we want to have not move anywhere. And you can see it's lined up right here right along with the uh, spar that comes in here and this little notch down here is right at the very end and still moves so we don't have it bound that's good So I've got a bolt in place, it's an AN310, and then I've got in this other hole that I drilled a Clico coming in from the back side. Seems to be holding it okay. The pin is still tight but not unmovable or bound in any way, so it's good. I'm just gonna drill out this last hole. We've got three holes drilled in place. The uh, tab here hasn't moved at all that I can tell. Looks like it's in a good spot. My pin is not bound so that it doesn't move. So I'm gonna be able to put that in and take it out later. And uh, yeah, I'm good with that. So there's three holes in this. Uh, two of them, these two go towards the uh, fuselage, which is that direction, and then this last hole right here, uh, that goes to the outside of the wing, which is that direction. Um, the two that are on the uh, inside of the wing here, they get an AN11A bolt that goes through, and the directions say to make sure it's a tight fit, uh, which it is. Uh, both of these fit in there nice and tight. And then the AN10 goes in the third hole, and it's just slightly shorter than the other two. Um, and then this goes through, these three bolts go through into the wing uh, spar here. 
And then I put uh, some washers and nuts on the other side of this and tighten that all down. Still need to uh, deburr this part real quick though. Those fit in there pretty snug. Right, go ahead and drop my uh, washers on here. One on each bolt. Try not to get this last one cross threaded here. There we go. I'm going to tighten this down until it just about touches. I'll tighten up the other ones too so that they all kind of center themselves. those three bolts in place. That's what it should look like from this side. So the uh, the other wing spar slides into here and we'll bump up against this and that'll keep it from going that direction at all. There's a pin here to hold it on that side and uh, another pin over here that uh, merges the two together as well. So now I have these rig plates here in place on both of the uh, spars. Um, the last thing I need to do is add down here in this bottom corner down here is one more bolt uh, that I haven't added just yet. I've noticed that there's an error on this. Um, there have been several bolts that I've put into place here and it asks for the washers on the fore side of the wing. This is the aft that I'm looking at, looking forward. Um, and these bolts here, if you'll notice, are lined up with the uh, flat side of these bolts all in line parallel with each other. And that's what it says to do here as well. Um, and the reason for that is that when the spars come together, the uh, right spar is going to slide into this until it bumps up against this rig plate here. And it needs to be able to clear these bolts. And if they're turned just a little bit, you know, 45 degrees wrong, they're gonna run possibly into the points of these bolts instead of the flat side of the bolt. Um, and down here, it says to do the same thing here we go, it says to install in a tight fit hole um, and install the bolt from the aft side with the bolt head indexed as shown to clear the right hand spar, which is what we're talking about here. It's got a flat, the flat edge here is parallel uh, with the bottom of the spar um, when the airplane is assembled. Then it says the washer goes on the aft side and I believe that that's a mistake. Um, if you were to take this bolt, for example, with a washer on it, if we can get that engine, um, to focus here. Uh, if you look at this, the uh, the pointed side of the bolt here um, doesn't clear the washer. And so if we were to leave the washer on the aft side, it's possible that the other spar when they come together would run into that washer. Um, and so I believe that that's a mistake because if you look on the other side over here, it says to install the bolt um, from the forward side with the bolt head indexed as shown. You can't see it here because it's coming through the other side. Um, and it says the washer goes on the outside. So I think there was probably a copy and paste error here. Um, I believe that the washer should go on the opposite side where the spar comes together. So that's how I'm going to assemble it just to make sure there's clearance on both sides um, and call this uh, complete. All right, last bolt's in place. Uh, the flat part of the bolt is, uh, well, mostly uh, parallel here with the wing. I just need to, uh, I guess, turn that just a tiny little bit more, but uh, there we go, the, uh, both of the wing spars are complete. They've been mated together, and uh, next step is to start adding ribs to it and uh, eventually build out a wing. All right, uh, that's how you mate your uh, wing spars together and uh, finish up <laughs> the bolts that I left out because of uh, missing parts. Uh, if you've made it this long, thanks for hanging out, and uh, if you are here for the first time, please consider subscribing. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. See ya.